Yo, how's it going everybody? You got Sketch here and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're looking at a vertical shooter that was the last Sega Saturn game to be released, which also has former members of NMK on the production team. We're checking out Battle Garega, developed by Rising and published by Aiding, released into arcades in 1996. This will release to the Sega Saturn in 1998 and be revised by M2 Shot Triggers for modern consoles in 2016, released into the PS4 and Xbox One in 2017. This one is an experience of a shoot 'em up and an addictive play as well. Though before going too much further, let's check out the story. Brothers Brian and Jason are two mechanical prodigies that are approached by the Federation and contracted to design and produce military vehicles, to which they agree. Later on, they look into the skies to see that the Federation has taken their craft designs for themselves and began a hostile takeover of every piece of land in sight. The brothers band together to stop the Federation with two of their personal crafts with the help of the Maho Daisoxin. The skies are about to erupt. Are you ready? Gameplay wise, you've got a 2D vertical shoot em up that runs through seven stages of absolute mayhem. You can choose from four base craft and four alternate craft, and you're off into the fray. Green metal will give you additional pods which you can stack up to four of until being shot down. These pods will have several fire modes that you can cycle through or depending on what craft you're using will activate by default. Each configuration has its advantages and can help you lay down some serious damage when figuring out which ones work best for your playstyle. The spread and search options will absolutely smack when fully charged, though the enemy has several tricks of their own for you too. You got a standard shot with rapid fire by default and a heavy crush attack which you can build through picking up bomb fragments. While you can drop special attacks without a full stack of bombs, they will be much stronger with each full stock. Each craft has a unique crush bomb and depending on playstyle certain attacks will gel more than others but all are devastating in the right hands. There are several types of metals that enemies will drop and these will all charge your onboard weapon systems. Maxing out all of your weapon systems will make you a flying tank but one hit is all it takes to send you crashing back down to earth. Battle Garega also uses a scaling difficulty system that increases if it's easier playing well and throttles back if it's easier having a rough time or have a low amount of lives per stage. The action gets hectic either way and even the second stage has some areas that will smoke most players until figuring out attack patterns. The difficulty is up there, but it's an exciting playthrough as you battle the Federation. Stages all have several sections, and depending on where you land on the game's difficulty scale, this can become a manic shooter pretty early on. Fire patterns come at you fast and have a decent chance of being randomized on each encounter. Bosses will have series of different opening attacks and damage phases depending on how you're playing, and these often get nasty, even on the lower settings. The boss on stage 4 has a windshield wipe formation that mercs me almost every time that it moves, for example. That's mostly because I'm never sure what it's going to do in this encounter, so this random scale element keeps things interesting and incentivizes learning each variation. You can shoot through certain bullet types, which is important to keep in mind. Orange bullets and smaller missiles can be shot through with your standard shot, allowing you to press through attacks and weave through more lethal rounds. Bullet herding will be a crucial technique to utilize whenever possible to draw enemy fire and paths you can cut through. Even early on in the run, you'll notice enemies will trace your movements, which is foreshadowing for the rest of the run. While you can respawn and continue right where you last went down, the scoring in this version only counts what you get on the first credit for the leaderboards and progression. This is also how you raise your credit limit, which admittedly took me a moment to figure out until after getting close to full clears but wiping all my continues. While it was confusing why scores to continue increases weren't saving at first, once realized, you'll have free play open in no time. You can get 1cc runs here, but it will take some practice and it's fun to learn even when you're getting roasted. The gameplay is blazing fast and enemies are on screen almost constantly along as you see a gunfire. It's a bit easy to get lost in everything that's happening on screen since the action stays at a steady clip from start to finish. In addition to the scaling system, gunfire in particular can get buck and hose down the whole screen at times. While bullets stick out, some of them do blend into the backgrounds being silent killers in those heated battles. Graphics wise, Battle Garega runs on the Toho Plan version 2 hardware, which powered a lot of heavy hitters like Batsugun, Truxton 2, Dog Yoon, and Grindstormer in the arcades. It was also programmed by Shinobu Yagawa, who worked on the 1992 caravan shooter Rekka, later going on to work with Cave on games like Ibarra and Pink Suites. Battle Garega is a great looking vertical shooter with layered effects and parallax scrolling through the game's seven stages. Backgrounds all have a lot of sharp detail, and the hand drawn sprite work mixed with light vector elements is a decent blend visually. Ground-based enemies leave craters in the earth, and by air have 90s Michael Bay levels of explosions. The detail in each level is a standout during the playthrough, with the opening valley stage where you traverse the canyons, and the following plateau where the action from the skies reflect on the waters below until reaching land. The chain link bridges of the factory cast a shadow on the floor beneath as tanks travel across are all neat visual details amongst many others. These are just a couple of examples, but the visuals are dope here. Enemies range from military craft like planes, jets, and tanks, and then spiral off into massive mega tanks and bomber crafts the size of continents. The boss from stage 3 is a giant mechanical stingray and this thing looks sick. Bosses are all massive and take up healthy chunks on screen. And the final boss splits into two forms with its escape pod becoming a flying warhead that laces the screen with an absurd amount of projectiles to dodge in. Ooh wee, this part is gnarly. While Battle Garega cooks on high the whole time, there's a few spots where it does slow down and touch when there's a lot happening on screen. Despite a couple spots, the game runs and looks smooth throughout the majority of the run. When it does slow down, it's typically welcome to give you an extra moment to see a pattern or find a 
swift exit out of an attack. There isn't much as far as cutscenes or interludes, but the opening sequence and the end credits do have some nice animation. The hand-drawn art style mixed with vector graphics are a nice touch here, and the style is very much a strong suit presentation-wise. It pretty much lets the game speak for itself. Sound-wise, Battle Garega smokes with a soundtrack from none other than Manabu Namiki, who scored Thunder Dragon 2 and Zebblade among several cave games. The soundtrack straight up smacks here, and the tunes are a balance of hype and entrancing ominous grooves. You can hear calling cards in their compositions having that very action movie influence sound of the 90s cinema and elevated by the mid 90s club sound. You get a lot of tonal shifts and it has the feel of playing through a movie's axe with a killer backbeat. With the action in tandem, this is a marvel in sound design. Sound effects are punchy and this too has a very NMK feel with its audio work which now that I think of it feels similar to the Thunder Dragon games. Jaw audio has a resonant smack across each craft and special weapons let loose a seismic crunch. The audio uses a few sound bites that are featured in cinema and animation and explosions are nice and crispy with proper bass behind each boom. There's also some light speech modulation when upgrading weapons and again it's interesting to see how much studio crossover there was with prolific shooters across the decades. Battle Gorega is a fantastic shoot 'em up and a gem amongst the Sega Saturn catalog and being able to play it on modern consoles opens up the accessibility of it considering otherwise it's a very expensive import. It's a well-crafted shooter with a lot of style and subtleties that fans of NMK and Cave may notice considering it's got a few members of both involved on the project. It's also a very challenging yet rewarding experience once you figure out all those sections that gave you trouble in addition to being really fun to play. While there aren't multiple endings, using each craft has a tendency to see which one works best for you in pursuits of getting high scores. The arrange mode is also a fun way to further randomize the game and add an extra challenge, so there's a good bit to digest here. All things considered, it's an excellent shoot 'em up despite some minor shortcomings. Battle Garega gets an 8 out of 10 and comes highly recommended to shoot 'em up fans and fans of action games since this one is a non-stop ride from the moment you fly in. You got several modes on offer to get familiar with everything, including an extra mode where you can increase the starting difficulty ranks upwards of 40%, which would be insane, but hey, it's there if you want to dance. The soundtrack also bangs, so there's a lot to appreciate if you're into games like these. It's available on the PS4 and 5, along with the Xbox One and series consoles. If you can find an original Saturn copy for a good price, it's a great addition to any collection, on top of being a great lesser talked about shoot 'em up. And I thank you again if you made it this far into the video. If you find these helpful, that's awesome. I'm glad to use as a resource. Check back often, we'll have more reviews and commentaries come up in the near future. And once again, Happy New Year, everybody. Until then, take it easy and stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one.